The Avenger. The road to crime ends in a trap that justice sets. Crime does not pay. Avenger's sworn enemy of evil is actually Jim Brandon, a famous biochemist. Through his numerous scientific experiments, Brandon has perfected two inventions to aid him in his crusade against crime as the Avenger. The telepathic indicator by which he is able to pick up thought flashes, and the secret diffusion capsule, which cloaks him in the black light of invisibility. Brandon's assistant, the beautiful Fern Collier, is the only one who shares his secrets and knows that he is the man the underworld fears as the Avenger. And now... The Avenger and the Coins of Death. Madam Yanina? Yes? Come into tent. How to breathe? Oh, thank you. You come to Yanina... The queen of the gypsies to have your future foretold. Is that not so? Yes. My name is Caspar Hobson. A friend of mine recommended you. Sit there, across the table, in the lamplight. I would see your face. Oh, yes, of course. Now, cross this old gypsy's palm with silver, and she will call upon the spirits of all Romany to reveal your future to Yanina. Uh, the silver, yes. Uh, I have a coin for you here. Rare old silver coin. Here, take it. No! No! I curse upon you! Got you! What is it? What's the matter? Oh, this silver is accursed. You are doomed. What are you talking about? A curse upon you! Got you! Go away! Go away! You have no future. Listen here, I have a right to know what you're raving you go about. Go away! Got you! Get out! Valdo! Valdo! Come quick! Drive this cursed one from the gypsy camp. All right, I'll go. This sort of thing is outrageous. should be reported to the go, police. Go, 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 go. The mark of death is upon you. You have no future. Out of my sight, go, 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 go. You have no future. <laughs> Climb in the car, quick, Casper. You're dripping wet. Yes, thanks, Tom. Let's get out of here. Casper, you're shaking like a leaf. What's the matter? Start driving, I'll tell you. Now, what is it? Now, that old hag of a gypsy woman. She drove me out. You mean she wouldn't tell your fortune? That's right, Tom. She shrieked at me like a mad woman. <laughs> Told me I had no future. Oh, that's nothing to get so upset about, Casper. Probably her stock way of getting rid of customers after she gets her money. Yeah, that's what I would have thought, too. Except she didn't take my money. She didn't take your money? No, she threw it away from her as though it had a plague on it. Then she started shouting that I had no future. Oh, don't take it so seriously, Casper. All this fortune-telling is a bunk anyway. 
I'm surprised you ever bothered driving out here over this muddy country road in this weather. Well, business worries can drive a man to any extreme, Tom, and I am worried. Well, look, Casper, you're on the very threshold of a million dollars. Well, that C3M you've invented will revolutionize the whole That's industry. That's just the trouble. It'll drive hundreds of established companies out of business and make a legion of enemies for me. Be, be careful, Tom. Tom, you almost went off the road there. That cliff dropped sheer all along here. Yeah, it's raining so hard I can hardly see. This muddy road's as slippery as glass. Well, take it easy. My nerves are bad enough as it is. Ah, good dinner will fix you up, Casper. We're coming to the summit of the hill now. It won't be so bad from there on in. Yeah. Gee, look at that rain. Yeah. Hey, Tom, we've got a flat. Steady the car. I can't. We're skidding. The brakes won't hold. We're going over the cliff. Jump, Tom, jump! Fern, I picked up that wild music on the telepathic indicator again. Where do you suppose it's coming from, Jim? I'm not sure, Fern, but it sounds like gypsy music. Could be coming from that gypsy camp several miles out of town. Fern, quick, turn up the volume a little. Yes, Jim. What happened, Jim? Suddenly, right in the midst of the music, there was a crashing sound, and then complete silence. Well, maybe the storm cut off the reception. Well, that's not very likely, Fern. Telepathic messages aren't usually affected by elemental disturbances. When the indicator suddenly loses contact with a strong impression like that, it usually means that the thought itself has been terminated by violence. Oh, stay with it, Jim. Looks like this may be something important. Were you able to pick up anything more, Jim? No, not a thing, Fern. Oh. Oh, that must be Inspector White, Jim. Remember, we invited him to dinner. Oh, yes. Uh, turn off the indicator, Fern. Yeah. I'll let the inspector in. Right, Jim. Oh, just when I finish up all the reports on one case, something else turns up. Good evening, Fern. Oh, hello, Inspector. We'll be ready to go as soon as I file these reports. Is it still raining? Well, it's beginning to let up a little now. Some storm, though. Anything new at headquarters, Inspector? Not a thing, Jim. Had a nice, quiet, routine day for a change. Now, I'll get it, Fern. Hello? Oh, yes. Yes, the inspector just came in. Just a minute, please. It's for you, inspector. Oh, what's up now? Hello, Inspector White speaking. What? Holy smoke, it would have to happen way out there. Okay, yeah, I'll go right away. What's the trouble, inspector? A car went over the cliff out near Marsden. An accident. But I've got to get out there and make a report. Well, we'll go with you, Inspector. We can have dinner when we get back. Yes, uh, this may be the very thing I picked up on the indicator a while ago. Now, listen, Jim. You can come along if you want to. But don't try any of your hunches. This is an accident. This is the road we took to the scene of the accident last night? That's right, Fern. Well, why are we coming out here again? Jim, you're holding back on me. What are you up to? Well, I did a little checking when I got home last night, Fern, and discovered that this Hobson accident was the second to occur at that same spot within a few months. Oh, in other words, you're suspicious? Yes. But this is a very dangerous piece of road, Jim, and in wet weather I can easily see how a car might skid over the side. Yes, but what was that car doing out here last night? This is really a private road. And no one in his right mind would drive over it in a storm if there were any other way of reaching his destination. Well, this is all farmland around here. Here's the spot where the car went over the cliff. Uh, I want to take a look around. Come on, Fern. What are you looking for, Jim? Well, the tires on that car were badly ripped. I wonder if that happened before the car went over or when it crashed. Well, let's see if we can find anything. The rain seems to have done a good job of covering up all traces of the skidding. Mm, the mud's too deep to do much walking around here. Yeah, they might as well drive on, Fern. There's not a trace of a clue here. Look, Jim, there's a fork in the road just ahead. Yeah, and there's a mailbox there, too. I, I want to see the name on it. Oh, I think you're making a mountain out of a molehill, Jim. This is just an old country road. Can you make out the name on the box? Yeah, it's, uh... Philip Peters. Now what? Do we drive up that road and call on Farmer Philip Peters? No, no, we don't. First, we'll investigate the other fork in the road. Well, nothing as invigorating as a morning drive in the country, I always say. 
Only when I think of all the work I have to do in those laboratory reports, I can't enjoy it as I should. Look, Fern, over there. Oh, it's a gypsy camp. I thought they were located somewhere in this section. Now this motor trip is beginning to make a little sense. Listen. Can you hear music? Oh, yes. It's nice, isn't it? Nice. Fern, that's the same music I picked up on the telepathic indicator just before the crash last night. Oh, gosh, Jim. Do you suppose all this adds up to something? I think so, Fern. Come on. Jim, do you think it's a good idea to go barging in on these gypsies? Well, we'll soon find out. Oh, look, Jim. Yeah? There's an old gypsy woman standing in front of that first tent. She's giving us a dirty look. Let's see if she'll give us any information. Stop, Baldo! Stop music! Stop music, I say! Make circle, gypsies! Make wrong circle! Oh, Jim, I don't like this. Those gypsies look menacing. What do strangers want from gypsies? A little information. Oh. Or oh, you want fortune told. Or cross all Yanina's palm with silver, and she will call upon the spirits of all Romany. Uh, no, no, you don't understand. It's uh, not about myself I wish to ask. Uh, what then? What you want? I'm making inquiries about the accident that occurred near here last night. Gypsies don't know, don't know anything. Did two men come here last night about 7 o'clock? You're from police? Yes, I'm connected with the police. So you'd better tell me what you know. What's he saying, Jim? I don't know. Answer in English. What did you say? Gypsies know nothing. Go away. Let gypsies alone. Not until you answer my question. Were there two men here last night? Yes. One man come, the other wait in car. What did the man want? He want Gypsy to tell him future. Yes, and what did you tell him? What can I tell him? He is cursed. He has no future. How did you know that? You didn't read that in his palm. I will say nothing more. Then I think you better come with us. Maybe the police can make you talk down at headquarters. No, no. I'm in the I'm in the Speak in English. The accursed must die. You cannot blame gypsies. Maybe not, but you know more than you're telling. Oh, Jim, I think we'd better get out of go here. Go away, Gajo, go away. Things will go better with you if you'll come along with us quietly. No, no, I will not go. You, Gajo, always try to make trouble for gypsies. Oh, Jim, come on. Those men have clubs and they're closing in on us. Go away, go away, Gajo. Baldo, Baldo, become Gajo. Become Gajo. Back to the Avenger and the Coins of Death. Jim, this case is beginning to look sinister. Don't you worry your pretty head, Fern. Things are beginning to shape up fairly well now. Jim, just how much stock do you put in the weird story that old gypsy woman told them down at headquarters? Well, that's hard to say, Fern. Yanina was wild with anger because we sent Inspector White's men out there to bring her in. She might have told a few lies just to get even. 
That's why I'm going to investigate everything she said. She claimed that Philip Peters, who owns the land where the gypsy camp is located, gave them permission to stay there as long as they wished it, didn't she? Yes, and uh, now that either means that Mr. Peters is a very generous man or that he had some reason for wanting the gypsies to stay there. Oh, I don't trust those gypsies, Jim. All the facts in the case seem to hinge around them. Yes, Yanina admits that Richfield, the first victim, came to her camp the night he went over the cliff three months ago. She told him he had no future. And no one ever saw him alive again. Then she told Hobson the same thing. And he went over the cliff. Well, we can be sure she's holding something back, Jim. She absolutely refused to reveal why she told those two men they had no future. Yes, she conveniently claims that the spirits of her tribe would curse her if she reveals her reason for predicting their deaths. Oh, a neat method of holding back vital information, I'd say. Well, we'll soon find out. Right now, I'm off to have a talk with Philip Peters. Do I come too, Jim? No, Fern. I'm going out to the Peters farm as the Avenger. What's that? Who's in this barn? It's the Avenger, Peters. The Avenger? Where are you? I can't see you. No, but you can hear me, Peters. Well, what do you want? I I haven't done anything. I thought the Avenger only fought criminals. I haven't committed any crime. Are you quite sure of that, Peters? There's evidence against you. Well, you can't frighten me, Avenger. I'm an honest farmer, and my conscience is clear. Then you shouldn't mind answering some questions, if they'll help solve a murder. Well, what are you getting at? Just this. Why did you give that tribe of gypsies permission to live rent-free on your land? Well, I didn't. Uh, well, I mean, that is, I... What do you mean, Peters? If you didn't want them to stay, you could have driven them off. This is your land, isn't it? Yes, that is, in, in a way. Start making sense, Peters. Or I'm not going to believe you're as innocent as you claim to be. Well, uh, all right. I, I was warned never to tell this. But I didn't count on getting mixed up in anything crooked. Do you own the land or don't you? Oh, no, no, I, I don't own it. Uh, the property's in my name, and I run this farm. But uh, somebody else really owns the place. Who owns it, Peters? Well, Dr. Milet, who lives at Seven Willows. He's the owner. But he doesn't want anybody to know it. He said I could live here rent-free as long as I pretended the place was mine. Was it Dr. Milet's idea to let the gypsies stay here? Yes, uh, that was part of the bargain. I was to let the gypsies camp here until he told me to drive them off. They've been here for almost a year now. I don't think they'll want to stay much longer, Peters. Well, I, I'll be out on my ear now, too. Say nothing of this, and you will be protected. You have aided justice, Peters. But remember, you must say nothing of this encounter with the Avenger. Seven Willows just ahead. I think this must be the lane Jim meant for me to meet him. Oh, I thought he'd be here waiting. I hope nothing's happened. Oh, there he is. Jim, over here. Hello, Fern. You're punctual to the minute. Oh, get in the car, Jim, and tell me what's been happening. What in the world were you doing up at Seven Willows? I thought you were going to see Peters. I went to Peters first and then came here to get a line on Dr. Milet. Dr. Milet? Who's he? He's a mind analyst who specializes in silent thought as a nerve treatment for wealthy clients. Well, how does he fit into the picture? Did you question him? No, I went into Seven Willows merely to observe and listen. No one saw me. Did you find out anything, Jim? Plenty, I think. Dr. Milet was interviewing a young lady by the name of Helen Dresden. When she asked him for advice about her future, he suggested that she visit the gypsies. Ah, this is beginning to add up to something at last. Yeah... We'll have to work fast, Fern. It's starting to rain. Well, what do we do, Jim? First, we'll intercept Miss Dresden as she drives past here. I'll block the road with our car and she'll have to stop. Mm -hmm. Uh, There. we better get out of the car, Fern. All right. Oh, here she comes now. What's the matter? Is your car stalled? Uh, No, we want to speak to you for a moment. What is this? Listen, if you... Oh, please don't be frightened, Miss Dresden. This is Jim Brandon of the police department. Oh, well, what do you want? Miss Dresden, I have reason to believe your life is in danger. Well, that's a perfectly silly idea. Oh, no, it isn't, Miss Dresden. 
Several deaths have already occurred, and Mr. Brandon thinks you are the next online. You're headed for the gypsy camp, aren't you, Miss Dresden? That's right. If you wish to save your life, you'll let Miss Collier go in your place. But, but why? You will have to trust us, Miss Dresden. Well, well, what do you want me to do? You take my car and go directly to police headquarters. We'll borrow your car and go to the gypsy camp. Hmm. All right. I don't get this, but if you're from the police, I suppose you know what you're doing. Oh, and uh, one other thing, Miss Dresden. What instructions did Dr. Milet give you? Why, uh, well, none in particular. Uh, he told me the gypsy woman, Janina, was clever at foretelling the future. Yeah? To go over there and, um... Oh, yes, he told me to give her this old silver coin. Let me see and... that coin. Here. Look at this, Fern. What is it, Jimmy? Oh, I've never seen a silver piece like that. No, Fern. This is Dr. Milet's coin of death. That's Yanina's tent, Fern. I'll wait here while you go inside. You know what to do. Yes, Jim. This should only take a minute. Madame Yanina? Madame Yanina, may I come inside? Yes. Come. Oh, it's you. What you want now? Come make more trouble for gypsies. No, Madame Yanina. I want to have my future read. Now you make joke of gypsy. No, seriously. I want you to tell my fortune. Oh, sit down, then. Across the gypsy's palm with silver. Yes. Here's a coin. No! No! What's the matter? You are cursed! You have no future. Go away! Gato! Go away! Oh, Madame Yanina! Oh, go. Go, you have no future. You have no future. Out of my sight, Gato! You will die! You will die! <laughs> Fern, are you sure you understand exactly what to do? Yes, Jim. When we come to that big pine tree, just before we reach the place where those other cars went over the cliff, I'm to jump out of the car. I'll stay with the car a moment longer and then follow you. Oh, be sure to jump in time, Jim. Otherwise... When you jump out, keep well off the road so no one can see you. I understand. Open the car door, Fern. Get ready. We're coming to the place. Okay, Fern. Jump. I don't seem to have any broken bones. Oh, I hope Jim makes it all right. Gosh, I'm covered with mud. Fern, Fern, where are you? Here, Jim. You all right? Oh, fine. Now, there goes the car over the cliff, Fern. Come on. Oh, look, Jim. There's a man on the road up ahead. Yes, he's pulling in a big board from the road. It's time for action, Fern. Oh, do be careful, Jim. All right, Dr. Mallet. I've got you covered. Stand where you are. Who's that? It's the police. Your little scheme didn't work this time, Doctor. The police? You won't take me alive. Jim, he's running toward the cliff. He's not going to get away as easy as that. I'll head him off. Oh, be careful, Jim. This road is slippery. No, you don't, Dr. Milet. Let me go. You're the one that's a murder, Milet. And you're going to get what's coming to you. Oh, Jim. He's trying to cut you over the cliff. Oh, no. Oh. Jim, are you all right? Yes, Fern. I had to knock Milet out. Oh, Jim, for a moment I thought... Come on, Fern. Let's get our prisoner back to town. You're drenched.
Jim. Uh, there are just a few points I want to get clear before I speak to the reporters. Reporters, Inspector? So soon? Well, this is something hot, Jim. Until I got Mylot's confession, those deaths were booked as accidents. Really? You should be more careful, Inspector. Now, Jim, don't start that. Okay, okay, Inspector. What do you want to know? Well, Mylot confessed that he was paid by a big businessman to get rid of Ridgefield and Hobson because both of them were about to patent a new process that would have ruined their competitors. But he won't say a word about that Dresden girl. Why did he plan to get rid of her? Yes, Jim. I don't understand that either. Helen Dresden was to inherit a fortune on her 25th birthday, which falls next week. Now, Miss Dresden didn't know this, but one of her cousins did and paid Dr. Milet to get rid of Helen so the fortune would be divided among the remaining relatives. But, Jim, all this doesn't explain what part the gypsies played in the affair. The gypsies were the mysterious angle in the case, Fern. Actually, though, they had nothing to do with the murders. They didn't? No. Dr. Milet had the gypsies on that land in order to have an excuse to send his victims out on that deserted road. And while his victim visited the gypsy, Milet laid his trap. You see, he placed a big plank with long spikes in it across the road, just at the summit of the cliff. And he covered the whole thing with mud so it couldn't be seen. Now, the road was very narrow there at the summit, and when the tires blew out, the car skidded enough to send it right over the cliff. And they always chose rainy weather for the job so that the car would be certain to skid and to make it look more like an accident. But those coins, what about them, Jim? The coins were just a precaution to cast suspicion on the gypsies in case the victim might survive the accident. But why did the old gypsy go wild at the very sight of those coins and tell everyone who offered them to her that he had no future? Because, Fern... Those coins were exact copies of the silver Judas accepted for the betrayal. All gypsies have been taught to hate them and to believe that all who possess them are doomed. Well, I think I owe Yanina an apology. Her predictions proved true in this case, anyway. Those really were coins of death. <laughs> Characters, names, places, and plots used in the Avenger program are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. This is a thought, a thought, a thought. Remember, listen for another adventure of... The Avenger. 